Hi, I'm Edwin Rutsch, and this is Dialogues on Building a Culture of Empathy, and today I'm here with Shanti Garba. Uh, thanks, Shanti Garba, for joining me for this discussion. You're welcome, Edwin. You're welcome. So let me just give a little introduction to you. What I have here is that you're an experienced uh, teacher in nonviolent communication and uh, in Buddhism, and you're also a member of, uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it right, the Buddhist order, the Tri Ratna, is that? Tree, yeah, that's it, Tree Ratna. Tree Ratna, Buddhist order. So you've been uh, practicing meditation and Buddhism since uh, 1985. And in 1996, you were ordained as in the Buddhist order. And that uh, you have the name Shantigarbha, right, which uh, you're, it's a given name and it mean, means a seed of peace. Yep, and that's it. And your, what we're going to talk about is your book. You have a new book Yay. out. Yay! <laughs> Celebrate your new, I, I think, a real labor of love. <laughs> um, me. It took 11 years. 11 years, my goodness. Uh -huh. So it's uh, called I'll Meet You There, and it's a practical guide uh, to empathy, mindfulness, and uh, communication. And make it really, get it really close. Oh, yes. There well, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, still getting used to it. <laughs> uh, do you want to say anything else in, by, by way of introduction about yourself? Um, yeah, that kind of covers it. I mean, I've been um, a nonviolent communication trainer since 2004, certified to, since 2004. And my interest in empathy really came out of that, came, out, came through nonviolent communication. And then I started looking at how that relates to the to the Dharma, the Buddhism, and yeah, the Buddhist tradition more generally. Once I kind of got plugged into empathy. Yeah. yeah okay. Well, the book. I mean, it has a lot of research. I just, you know, uh, having read it and just you know, kind of giving, looking at the overview, it like weaves a lot of threads together. So you've got like the nature of empathy, the science, the biology, the neuroscience. You mentioned different studies. You know the psychology and then there's a whole area on nonviolent communication and then buddhism and you have a lot of anecdotes you know, like some personal stories and as well as every chapter i think about every chapter has some exercises as, as well yep yep it's all in there kind of a different a mix of different elements trying to bring together different elements to really understand empathy in a kind of more kind of global way like well this, this, you know, empathy, the, in this tradition, they say this about this, and in this, in this scientific research, they say this about it, and then trying to bring those things together and make some sense of them, you know. So, you yeah, know, you're really integrating these different threads, and it sounds like you're bringing in your personal interest in nonviolent communication, and your training, as well as your Buddhism, and like some history and so forth. And also, I was saying that you have a, a video on empathy from 2011, Mm -hmm. uh, you gave a talk, Empathy, What, Why, and How, and anyone can, there'll be a link to it, uh, okay. you know, in this. So it's a, it's a nice overview of empathy as well. You give sort of a lecture about the nature of empathy. So I was thinking maybe we could start with uh, how you're defining it, um, because there's a lot of different ways people are using it, and it, it gets pretty muddled, <laughs> if you ask me. Sure, so sure, with, yeah. Yeah. So how are you kind of defining it? Well, I, 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 I go with what uh, Marshall Rosenberg, uh, how he talked about empathy and he, in, in turn, he followed Carl Rogers. So I kind of go, you know, in terms of formal, formal definitions or, you know, um, um, explanations, I would say empathy is a respectful understanding of another person's experience. Uh, so that's Marshall Rosenberg, but it could have been Carl Rogers, you know, look at and unpacking that in different ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, that's that's kind of where I start, too. So I think we have a similarity. Mm -hmm. I've seen empathy is a, a feeling into someone's experience. So mm -hmm. it's it's more of a, uh, an awareness of the felt experience. Uh, so feeling into your experience, I see your head nodding and yeah, yeah. I can feel into the the quality of that, or I can see you smile, I can feel uh, into, you know, what I'm hearing you say, as well as sort of your body, and uh, also feeling in sort of a self-empathy, feeling into my own experience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so if you look at the science and then you look at, you go back to um, nonviolent communication, there's pretty, it's pretty consistent that we're looking for uh, a felt sense, a sense of resonance with the, with the feelings of, you know, of, of the person we're with, we, we're wanting to tune into. And also there's an element of understanding, uh, the perspective taking, uh, as the psychologists call it. Call it. Um, there's an element of understanding where that feeling is coming from. So it's not just tuning into the feelings, of the other person it's also having some felt understanding of where of where that feeling comes from that's the perspective taking or the the needs the the needs that nonviolent communication talks about mm -hmm. yes yeah, so it's feeling so it, needs yeah okay so it's you're you're feeling someone you're seeing where those feelings are coming from maybe even what the intentions are where the where they would like to go yeah in. yeah yeah intentions deeper motivations needs whatever you know whatever works yeah mm -hmm. values also sometimes comes in yeah the you know the um there we can keep exploring this a little bit there's you know there's some criticisms about empathy and one of the one of the biggest criticisms has been from uh paul bloom i don't know if you've read his book on against empathy mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like uh, for you know, a long time I was trying to understand what the heck was he criticizing that I couldn't make really sense of it. And I don't know if you've, you've looked at his work, uh, but he, what he was calling empathy was if you are upset, if you're like angry and, you know, mm. and then I see you and I become angry. Mm. So I kind of do this state matching and he's calling that empathy. So, yeah. yeah. What, how you that, about that, that wouldn't be my understanding. I mean, my understanding is I would call that sympathy or identification. You know, the psychological term is identification, where I try to elicit the same feeling in me as, the, as what I imagine the other person is feeling. So I would call that sympathy or identification or matching, as you, as you called it, which for me isn't empathy. Um, empathy is when I'm clear that I'm a different person. Uh, from the person I'm with that there's that clarity as well as there's the tuning in to the other person as well as the clarity that I'm different I'm a different person when I'm empathizing with somebody even if they're in deep grief it's anybody's guess what I'll be feeling while I'm doing that I might be feeling delighted with the sense of connection even though they're in deep grief and I'm totally with them at the same time I might be feeling uh, really elated just to have that 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 quality of connection with somebody who's in such a sense of uh, you know such, such grief or pain so the, the if we need that separation as well as the tuning in and the kind of the the the, the, the being with mm -hmm. okay so you're saying that uh, with empathy you're being with the person and you're being with their felt experience and their their experience and there's no you could be having all kinds of different experiences Absolutely. inside yourself and so making a differentiation between self and other uh yeah. and yeah and that way you're seeing that paul bloom is calling empathy is actually sort of you would call it maybe identification or sympathy and it might even be i would even say it's a block to empathy <laughs> well that's the other thing that's the other thing is that actually distress uh, actually impede, yeah, impedes uh, uh, em empathy. It makes it difficult. So one of the things that we train people in nonviolent communication is how to, how to reduce their own distress through self-empathy to the point that they're able to empathize with others. So that's a key, that's a key point. But if, if I'm distressed, there's no, you know, if, they, if, I don't, if I'm totally taken up with my own experience, it's very difficult to tune into another person's experience, mm -hmm. as, as I'm sure you, you know. <laughs> yeah, so if somebody's like really upset or they're very yeah. angry and, and they're just kind of in a rage that you, know, you, you don't want to get into your own fear or anxiety coming up, you want to be able to address, you want to be able to empathize with your own feelings to kind of yeah. get a sense of, of, I don't know, what equilibrium or groundedness or self-connection and, and then be present with that person here, what it is that yeah. they're experiencing and actually be present with their anger and, or if, if it is anger and then see what's behind that and go into that, into that feeling. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we say. We say self-empathy, a moment of self-empathy first. So checking with yourself. And then if you have the resources, if you have the space and the resources, then reaching out to that other person who, who's in, in anger. And also we say, uh, I say, 
um, if, some, if, if you want to empathize with somebody who's angry, then match them, meet them energetically meet them energetically people who are angry want to be met more than anything they really want to be met energetically and if somebody's angry and you come in uh, very quiet and subdued then that's likely to send them through the roof you know they're mm -hmm. likely to get mm -hmm. even angrier because mm -hmm. of that so if somebody's angry then i'll match them energetically in empathy so i say are you really angry because you want some respect right now hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. something like that or do you just want to be safe yeah mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. really intensity and that that is what is going to be received as empathy if somebody's really angry and upset like that yeah. well that is really interesting yeah i had they you know i i haven't looked into that aspect so much of the, the energetic you're, you're not saying you're you're matching their anger they're i'm really upset it's like you're just you feel really upset so you're matching the level of their intensity in terms of your listening and presence to yeah. Uh, make them, uh, what is that doing? What does that do for the person, do you think? That... Uh, it, it's, as I say, people who are angry want to be met. And they uh -huh. want to be met energetically uh -huh. more than anything. And, you know, if I come in right underneath, like, oh, you're really angry right now, then just imagine what that's like. If you are actually properly angry, it's like, yes, of course I'm angry, you know. <laughs> kind uh -huh. of, you know, so it goes up, the volume goes up, yeah. So, I think, People want to be energetically as much as anything uh, as well. And the words are kind of not pretty secondary. Yeah. In that, in that context. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what, you know, it's, uh, there's a couple of things coming up for me. One is a feeling of delight in talking to you. <laughs> so kind of just feeling happy and kind of delighted in, uh -huh. in uh, talking to you about this because of, yeah. I guess, because of the, the insight and the experience you have. And, uh, and I feel that we're sort of coming from a similar understanding too, in terms of, you know, Carl Rogers and Rose, Marshall Rosenberg's work. Uh, the second thing that's coming up is there was, a, I've been really wondering about this sort of state matching. And mm -hmm. so, and it comes from a situation where we have this empathy tent that we right. set up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we set it up at UC Berkeley and we had someone from the political right come into it. And people from the political left wanted to shut it down. So they were screaming, you know, at us, yeah. like, you know, no KKK, no fascist USA, no Trump. And they were screaming it at us. And I All said, right. would you like to take part in the empathy circle? <laughs> you know, would they just sit down? And they wouldn't, they just wanted to shut the whole thing down, just scream. Right. And I was really wondering how to address that. You know, it's like, and so what I'm hearing you say is it would be sort of a energetic, would you like to take part in an empathy circle? Do you want to be heard? You know? So I'm kind of hearing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't go with, <coughs> would you like to be, take part in the empathy circle first? I would say, do you really want to be heard? But this just, you don't see any way this is going to work. And in fact, you, you imagine this is just going to make things worse. This is just going to, going to continue this dynamic of, you know, oppression and what, whatever you know whatever language you want to use yeah. mm -hmm. so can I try to reflect uh, what you imagine what to be your, their values you uh -huh. know? I mean the, the louder the shout the deeper the needs you could say you know the louder the scream the deeper the needs yeah? hmm. I definitely can, will have more chance to try that out <laughs> so it would be nice if you would have been there I would have liked to have seen it in action yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, have, you yeah. done well, it in, have you done it in this type of a, you know, like I've in a done different... some pretty, I've, well, I've, I've done a few events in scary places in um, Israel, Palestine with this, you know, reconciliation events between Israelis and Palestinians uh, in Sri Lanka post-civil war and in Nepal post-civil war. So I've done a few shouty, screamy type events as well as, you know, domestic abuse, you know, violence and stuff. So, yeah. So, oh, do you have I, an I, 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 story? Do you have a story to tell? Like when okay. uh, that's energetic, you know, it's energetic. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, in Israel, on the West Bank in Israel, Palestine, um, we, we did this training for about 90 or 100 uh, Israelis and Palestinians. And pretty much every day we'd get to a very, very hard place where somebody or one group of people would be shouting across the circle to another group of people. And, uh, and then uh, fortunately I had a friend, um, Hagit, who was uh, an Israeli, um, 
a, 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 of, of Jewish extraction. And she was pretty much the only one who kept going in that context where she, she was willing to listen to the Palestinians and just to acknowledge their anger and their frustration and their sense of helplessness. Uh, and and uh, we were pretty low on resources to, to, to listen in that context, but she, she kept going. So I really admired her for that, that she was able to keep going. And just in the face of a group of people, just say, so what, what I heard is you're really angry and really, really upset and you just want to be understood that you, you've lost your land, you've lost your resources, uh, you, don't have, you don't have the protection of the law, you know, the, the government is, the Israeli government is taking away, you know, water, taking away other, other amenities and so on. So just, just kind of acknowledging what they were saying, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you were doing it sort of energetically as well, if they're screaming, you were... Yeah, just, just so you're really angry right now. You just want to be heard. You just want some basic respect. You want to be respected as a human being. Yeah? You want dignity. Yeah comes back to dignity and respect really as well as the other things you know? and how did that work what was sort of the reaction that you well i think they were very relieved to have some people there who who, who weren't part of the fight as it were fight in you know inverted commas i think they were very relieved to have some people there who were just there to listen including you know when i was one of those people and uh yeah i mean and then we would take we would take um We'd take the group, we'd, we, we'd split up into smaller groups, give people a chance to be heard, have a meal, do some dancing. You know, I learned how to, uh, they did a, um, a mock Palestinian wedding. Um, because it turns out, if you want to be friends with Palestinians, you need to learn their dances so that they can invite you to their weddings. So I didn't realize this, but it turns out you need to learn how they dance at a Palestinian wedding because otherwise it's going to be quite difficult to invite you to the wedding. So if you want to be a friend, you need to learn how to dance. So you need a mock wedding so you can mm, become mm -hmm. friends. So anyway, so that's what we did. You know, we kind of did those kind of community building things. And what about in Sri Lanka? What was your experience there? In Sri Lanka, um, I was with, well, we did one training with a group of um, uh, Singhalese and Tamils. And that was pretty, there was quite a lot of shouting going on there. Um, and then gradually they kind of came together towards the end of the, towards the end of the event. And then they had this big kind of, um, um, what should we say, talent show. They're very fond of talent shows in Sri Lanka, particularly singing competitions, singing games and competitions. So we had this big singing competition. So that was one. And then another one was a group of Tamils, 30 Tamils who, and of course the Tamils were on the, the, the losing side in, uh, in the civil war, if you can call it that. And I was there to teach them some, uh, I was being paid to teach some nonviolent communication to them. However, it was pretty clear um, they, had, they had no space to learn anything. I mean, they were just in total grief, in total mourning. This was after the, the, the Civil War. And so, so instead of uh, trying to sort of teach them anything, I just switched to, okay, well, I'll just try and create a space for them to, to mourn, for them to grieve. And so basically, I just kind of tracked that process with them. The, pro, the, the steps of grieving a calamitous event which had gone on for about 30 years and through that I, I learned very deeply about about grief and about mourning and I, I hope to write about it one day mm. uh, that, that, that process the steps you need to go through and I made you know I kind of I tried this and it didn't work and I tried that and it didn't work and then I tried this and then it did work and then mm. and then I realized oh actually it's a bit like something I learned before but it's a bit different as well it's kind of adapted self-empathy process but there's a with very spacious, with lots of space for, for, for the grief to come out. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds like you continuously learn and grow in terms of the different, in the different contexts, like how to apply this. And it's like one, sounds like different, at different times you need different uh, approaches. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then we use that stuff that I learned in Nepal with uh, ex maoist combatants and uh, victims of the civil war and government ministers we used what i'd learned in in sri lanka in in, in that other context yeah okay. yeah, yeah that's, so, how, that's how i've been learning really mm -hmm. just um following along 
seeing what the process looks like and feels like you know when when it's in when it's live and in a group of people over over days yeah. oh wow so yeah so we're talking about uh uh, the definition of empathy and, you know, how with uh, Bloom, we have different definitions uh, yeah, yeah. with what he is even talking. That happens a lot. Just, uh, you know, people, there's so much confusion about what we're actually meaning by empathy. So it's good to start with, you know, a clear definition. And then in your book, you have a whole chapter on what empathy is not. So you go through all the different uh, there's a whole, yeah, I don't know. There's so many different things that are not empathy, and you address each, address a lot of them in, in your book. So um, so that's a good way to kind of get a sense of, you know, try to find what it is, is, is you know, compare it to what is not. Is. Sure. And I don't know if you're up for it, but do you, do you want to do a little demo of uh, how not sure. to empathize? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, so Edwin, do you want to tell me about something that happened to you today or yesterday? Not not major, but something just kind of mild irritation or something like that. Um, I'll, I'll just pile on the not empathy for a minute or two and see if I can get them all in. Yeah. Um, well, I have a you know a situation that's really irritating me is that there's these uh, political left and right coming to Berkeley, oh. and we've been setting up our empathy tent and uh, to offer empathic listening between the sides and to each of them and do some mediation. How many times have you done that? Uh, probably about six, seven times. Okay, what day of the week? Uh, it's usually the weekend, uh, Saturdays and Sundays is when they, they come. Yeah, yeah. Have, you, have you tried online calls? I think that's gonna work better than you know, trying to face them when they're... Um, yeah yeah online we have tried online yeah actually it actually kind of works it uh, oh, sort of okay. oh, or, yeah so it and i would like to do more online uh but the, the thing i'm trying to get to which i hear you're trying to do sort of a question <laughs> i feel i'm trying to get to this the real problem and i feel like i'm yeah. kind of getting off from the yeah, real yeah. yeah the real problem is that the city is saying that that they, you can't have metal and like the tent pole. Oh, that must be stuff. terrible, Edwin. This must must be terrible for you. To it face is. It's people. like I'm really getting irritated. Yeah, I'm getting I know irritated. Just, I know just. I know. I know how you feel. I feel for you, Edwin. Uh, yeah. 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 So yeah. anyway, you get the idea. Yeah, I, think I feel like short circuited. It's like yeah. I have some place that I'm trying to share, yeah. trying yeah. to get to, trying a problem I'm trying to address. And you keep kind of taking yeah. me off. That's it. Of course, That's it. And I can feel the yeah. little bit of irritation. Like I really want to get this. I really want to share this, and and yeah. so I'm not not really feeling heard. Some of the questions were kind of interesting at first, but then it really kind of took me off. Yeah. Yeah. So we got data gathering there, which is you know just when uh, when I'm asking questions, get, gathering more information. Um, we got a bit of advice, you know, if you tried, mm -hmm. you know, online meetings, bit of, um, bit of sympathy. Oh, I know how that feels. A little bit of pity. Oh, poor Edwin. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, it must be awful for you. You know, I didn't get in storytelling. I could, oh, Ed, I, a bit of storytelling. Oh, Edwin, when you're telling me that, it just reminds me of the time when, you know, we used to do demos in the 80s, you know, sort of green green action demos and you know we had all sorts of trouble we had the police coming and visiting telling us no you can't let off fireworks in the street you know this is a little firework no you know so we'll take you we'll cut you off the jail blah 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 anyway you get the idea yeah i can feel it within me there's, yeah. there's sort of this quality i wanted to share and kind of yeah. be heard about and yeah. it keeps kind of getting pulled and tugged okay. and closed and and so I feel kind of more constricted than, than yeah, I would have if I'd been, gotten empathy. Yeah, so every, every, every time I spoke, the attention comes to me. I mean, that's the test, one of the main tests is that the empathy, the, sorry, the, the attention is coming to me. So I'm playing the game of listening, but I'm not really listening because the attention's coming back here to me. Whereas empathy, uh, the attention stays with the speaker, with you. And so mm -hmm. should we try that? Just to kind of uncross. Oh yeah, to, you want to try actually listening yeah. to me? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, so so I'm yeah I'm feeling pretty frustrated about uh, that the city is now saying you can't have the empathy tent at these demonstrations, 
And it's kind of like the core of what we're doing. They're, they're saying the tent could be used as a weapon of a riot. People could come and tear the tent apart and beat each other up. <laughs> so, and so I'm really trying to figure out what to do. And I'm thinking of sort of confronting the, the city and saying, I'm going to set up the empathy tent and, you know, whether you like it or not, because this is our free speech. This is, you know, our petition for redress of grievance. So I feel like I'm heading towards sort of a showdown or a confrontation okay. with the city and the police. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if you're feeling just exasperated uh, with this situation and just, is it just difficult to get your mind around it about, about how these people are thinking? Uh, I, not really. I, I feel more frustrated okay. and uh, I understand, I think I understand they have okay. fear. I understand okay. they have fear and anxiety and, yeah. and uh, so I have some understanding. Okay, fair enough. Them. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so I guess you, are you feeling frustrated because you like some understanding for your intentions, for you, that you're trying, you're actually trying to address the issues that they're talking about. You're actually, you know, trying to try, trying to contribute. Yeah, to exactly. You like and some credit, some flex, some 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 flexibility, and some credit to actually and do some support that. too. Some support. Okay. There yeah, you. that they could yeah. kind of help move this along, and it could be a method. Uh, yeah. Because these, these, there's like knock down, drag out street fights, you know, yeah. happening. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I think we're, as far as I can see, the only ones that are really, you know, in a big way, kind of stepping into this with a empathic uh, approach. And, okay. Yeah. Um, so you'd like some support to actually make a difference, to actually reduce the violence out there. Yeah. Right. Particularly from authorities who, claim to hold those things that dear i guess <laughs> yeah it feels really strange that uh i feel like there's kind of i feel like constriction and they're yeah. like you know push bringing down yeah. kind of the 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 police force and i feel like to that you know there's like this down constricting pressure and you know it's like to address that it's gonna it's gonna i'm going to go into a a scary kind of a place of really confronting confronting wow. them with uh, saying I'm putting up the tent if you want to arrest me for you know putting up the empathy tent uh, yeah. you know I'm willing to listen to you I'm willing to empathize with you <laughs> I'm willing to have an empathy circle here in the tent to talk about it I'm willing to offer the police free empathy the city free empathy and everybody free empathy but I'm going to do this no matter what okay know? Yeah, so what I heard is you're, you're really frustrated, and you, it's difficult to imagine addressing this this situation without the tent as a as a way of address as a, as a way of creating that or a way of kind of accommodating that. And at the same time, you're pretty scared about what might happen if you do actually kind of you know put the tent up and sort of see what happens. You know. Yeah, I'm imagining getting hauled off to jail because that's what uh, what they will do. We, we we went when last last week we sat up there and we just set up a couple of chairs and within two minutes we were surrounded by ten police officers just for having some chairs where we could do mediations in. So right, right, right. and it's, wow. then the next step is okay. We're not. I'm staying here. It's like, and then you know what's in trying to empathize with them, but. Uh, you know, be willing to dialogue and empathize, but, you know, holding fast on my needs. You know, this, these are my needs to have a space here to foster empathy. And I understand I'm willing to listen to yours. Let's have a dialogue. And they'll say, no, do what we tell you to do. Okay. And or we're hauling you off to jail. So, Right. Right. So it sounds like it's really difficult to imagine how to, how to get everybody's needs met in that situation, how to satisfy everybody. Yeah. 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 So yeah, well, that, that was nice. <laughs> Here I get an interview as well as a little bit of fantastic listening. There we go. There we go. <laughs> does what it says on the tin. <laughs> so how does that feel now? Now that I feel just... good. It's like I feel like an opening. I feel sort of this anxiety that's kind of down in this part of my body. It's having space to yeah. start coming up and would okay. be addressed and I, it feels good yeah. because I'm starting to get into you know my fear and my anxiety and it's you know it's like someone here to, to listen and 
So it feels like, I mean, there's a lot more there, like there's, it's, it's, but it, it's going in a really, uh, you know, it feels like a really positive uh, mm. direction. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm pleased to hear that. that it was, yeah. yeah, that you're able to receive, you know, my words and my expressions in that way as, as empathy, as understanding. Yeah, and it's a nice, yeah, nice to uh, demonstrate the two because that's kind of the easiest way to really understand is to see it uh, uh, modeled. Um, yeah. There's another aspect of, of empathy that, you know, there's that feeling into, you know, into your, that you were doing it to my experience, mm. the uh, me feeling into my own sort of a self empathy. Mm. And uh, then there's also what I've been calling imaginative empathy. Mm. And the imaginative empathy is sort of the role playing or perspective taking. So I could step into the role of being a police officer mm. or a city official and say, okay, I'm a city official and here's the situation. It's like, you know, I could speak, say, well, I, you know, I appreciate you wanting to have the empathy tent, but we, we need, uh, we need to have safety here. And we're really concerned about, uh, the tent being used, the people tearing it apart and beating each other up or maybe killing each other with the metal poles in it. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, concerns uh, or, uh, about that. And, mm -hmm. and so that's what I'm calling it. So it's that role, role taking, stepping into someone else's situation and mm -hmm. speaking uh, from what you consider to be their... Yeah. So, yeah. So that, that's like a different form. Does that, what, yeah. what, what you're calling that? Or? Oh, well, yeah, just kind of empathy and role play, I would call mm -hmm. that. that. That was something that I, I got from Marshall Rosenberg, that he would, would, like say, with climate activists, he would actually train them. He'd be the, the oil company executive sitting in his big office with his cigar, and, he, and, he, and he'd, he'd encourage them and coach them to empathize with him. Uh, so that they could they could understand things from his perspective. So so yeah, I got I I, I do that I, I do that kind of role play in the in the in in, in the trainings in the MVC trainings. Mm -hmm. So you actually take on a role because that's a little bit different than because it's adding another component, sort of a mm -hmm. that you know just like an actor that you can take on. You know any. Yeah, I mean, I think I think obviously for the for the. There's, there's an element of kind of play along or make believe. However, in terms of training empathy skills, it's very effective. It turns out to be very effective because people still come across the same uh, blocks to empathy, the same, you know, as they would if they were in a real, in the real life situation. They have, a, so they have a chance to practice and sort of develop their, their, uh, their kind of the new pathways in their brain, you know, you know. I think Marshall did a lot of that on his own. He sort of coached himself, but, you know, I think he sort of, I learned from him how to coach other people to, to do that. Mm -hmm. Coach others into doing role plays or? Into empathizing with the person that they, oh, have, uh -huh. they have trouble with, so the, in, you know. Um, yeah, and it's, oh. it's, a useful, uh -huh. it's a useful way for training empathy. It doesn't work for everybody. Some people have a kind of allergic reaction to role play. But mm -hmm. Well, there's a role play where you're speaking to someone in a role play where they're taking on the role. Then there's you taking on the role yourself yeah. too. So yeah. those are a little bit different. Sure. And I've seen that in mediation too, where you can take on, someone can step into a role. And it's quite amazing how people can really embody, you just give some basic instructions. You're, you're a father who's really authoritarian, kind of traditional, take this role in a mediation. And people say, you've really got it. You, you, you've, just, you've just covered, this is my father. And you know. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I think we all know the scripts. You know, we, there are a certain number of scripts and we, if we hear one side or if we hear even a, even a snippet of a, of a script, we know, you know, I've seen it time and again, as you say, that people, people say things in role, which, and the person whose situation it really is, they say, you can't say that. How can, you know, you can't say that. That's exactly what they would say, you know, <laughs> or, or I taught you to speak like that. I remember a, a mother t t telling uh, telling somebody in a workshop who was role playing her daughter, she said, "I taught you to speak like that." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you use that a lot, then it sounds. Oh, like and we use it as an aspect, as as, mm -hmm. as, a, as as one mode of 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 training empathy. One one mode, yeah. Yeah, we have a few other sort of uh, modes or ways of uh, addressing it as well.
Well, yeah, I'm still kind of exploring the defining empathy, you know, component. So we've, you know, compared the the criticisms, you know, like Paul Bloom's, the ima this is what I'm calling imaginative empathy. You've talked about some of the blocks and we've modeled uh, the, the blocks to empathy. But in, in the uh, academic world, they keep talking about affective and cognitive empathy. I wonder if you have what your thoughts are on, yeah. on, on those words. Yeah, well, um you know, affective and cognitive empathy comes back to uh, what I was talking about earlier, which is there's a feeling into a resonating with kind of the re you know, resonating with the other person. And and then there's also the kind of cognitive element or quasi cognitive element, which is perspective taking or understanding where the, the other person's feelings have come from. So what their motivations are or their intentions or their values or whatever. So empathy is a, it's, it seems to me quite a complex phenomenon because it's a combination of a mingling of those two elements, the affective and the cognitive. It's not enough just for empathy. It's not enough just to feel the feeling. You know, I'm calling that sympathy, which actually kind of can get in the way of empathy. And it's not enough just to kind of take the perspective of the other person. So, oh, so because you're in this situation and I had this experience which is similar to your situation, then you must be feeling this. It's not, it's not a cognitive process like that. It's much more embodied and bodily. But at the same time, it's got these two, these two elements. So when I'm, when I'm sort of coaching people to empathize, I tell them, I tell them to check down here in their, in their chest and in their guts and to use that as their kind of sounding board rather than hmm. up, here, up here in the head. Up here is too slow and it will go offline very quickly if you, if you get uh, distressed or angry or whatever. That, that won't be functioning. So you need something down here. I don't know if you can see, I'm showing, I'm showing my, um, my chest and my guts. And that's the kind of sounding board for, for, for empathy that, that I encourage people mm -hmm. to, to use. Because it's just much more reliable uh, as a as a sounding board, it's kind of more embodied. Mm -hmm. So the, it's uh, when you're trying to empathize. Do you mean that you connect with your body, like what your felt experiences, and try to be in be sensitive, like where your awareness goes to your chest and your 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 gut, sort of the deeper part of your body. Like, hmm, what am I feeling at this moment? What's my sensations? Yeah, that's the self empathy part, mm -hmm. and then. And then there's the same, the same circuits, the same neural circuits and, and, and bodily circuits. So that, well, we just stick with the same neural circuits in the heart and the guts and, the, and up here in the head are used for self-empathy as they are for empathizing with others. It's the same faculty, you mm -hmm. could say, that kind of can resonate inwardly and resonate with other, with outwardly to, you know, towards other people. That's, that's the bit I found in in the neuroscience that i found very reassuring that uh, that it that the self empty part is absolutely crucial and people who don't have any connection with their own experience or their own bodies it's very very difficult for them to to empathize with with other people it just doesn't you know it's it's very hit and miss mm -hmm. so in a sense we're reading others um, feelings their felt experience by sort of feeling it in ourselves yes yes so we're kind of reading you by reading what's happening in our bodies too and what yeah and that information comes up seem it's what i've noticed is it, it tends to kind of come up it's like hmm where did that come from it's kind of it, when you when it when it first happens in that kind of bodily way you go oh that's weird because i'm not sure that's my feeling i th that might be something to do with that other person so then i'll check out so it's kind of intuition and i'll kind of check that intuition out with the other person oh you are you feeling upset at the moment and maybe because you'd like to be heard yeah so I'll, so it's an intuition so it's to be checked out it's not guaranteed 100 percent accurate knowledge it's a, I treat it as an intuition, like I treat my other tu intuitions, which is information to be checked out and to be explored. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the, the sort of the, yeah, the, the aspect of the felt experience is central that mm -hmm. we're sensitive to that empathy is about the sent, the uh, felt experience of, mm -hmm. you know, what am I feeling? What are other people's feeling? What are we feeling together? And sort of an exploration of feeling into, as well as 
uh, if someone has a, a feeling, you know, going into that feeling and what's underneath it, what's behind it, and maybe going yeah. into the, the feelings that we would desire, which might be called needs or values, or, I mean, people use the words a little differently, but yeah. the yeah. feelings behind the feelings are underneath or within. Well, for me, there's a cognitive <sighs> element. So I, I don't mm. know I could really call those feelings. For me, there's a kind of cognitive or values or needs element. I mean, or we could just stick with Carl Rogers. You know, empathy is for feelings and their causes and what causes feelings, you know, they just stick with that, you know, mm -hmm. motivations, intentions, needs, values. It doesn't, in a certain way, it doesn't particularly matter, you know, what you call that, that other. Uh, although I, I do prefer the word needs because it's, it's visceral. As I say in the book, it's a, it's got a visceral embodied quality to it. And, and that for me has, is more, uh, is, brings the element of integration. Uh, and bodily integration in more, more fully. Well, there's a, a paper by Carl Rogers uh, called, like one of the last ones he did, I think, on empathy. It's like empathic and unappreciated way of being. I don't know if you ever saw that paper. Uh, but he, he, he talks about sort of his theory of experience that we are, and he, he references uh, Gene Genlin, who started the focusing uh, mm -hmm. process of it. At any moment, it, we're, we're feeling something. There's this constant flow of felt experience that we're having. And the, the empathy is to sort of tune into that constant flow of felt uh, that moves, changes from kind of the moment to moment. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like that. So it's the centrality of, of a very central aspect of empathy is the felt experience of what Absolutely. we're feeling. Absolutely, and the and and yeah, and the motivations or the intentions or the needs behind or underneath that. And mm. I think I think um, an important element there is that empathy has the quality of following. I'm, when I'm listening, I'm following the the other person very closely. It, it can look so close that it can seem like I'm leading them. However, my my intention is simply to follow very closely the other person. The kind of as you say, the the unpredictable windings of their of their mind and their emotions and so forth and just to kind of just to see if i can really stay with them very closely and we do a, a kind of exercise from tai chi where where uh we we follow with the hand with the, with the top mm -hmm. hand mm -hmm. and move around the room with with somebody following them very closely physically and i say to them well that's that's the closest i can give you to an experience of, of listening with the body yeah, so it's bringing that kind of bodily element. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, what I'm hearing there is it's uh, the empathy is being with someone, following their experience, being very close to it, uh, to the point where it almost seems like you might even be leading them, but you are yeah. not leading, you're just following them, but so attuned to their, to their motion, it's hard to... It's hard for somebody watching mm -hmm. to separate us, because we're so close in that moment, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever done uh, contact improv dance? I've had a, I've dabbled in it. I've had okay. a game, but I, but I, I used to do Tai Chi and that's my, mm. I, still, okay. uh -huh. I still do Qi Kung. So I, yeah. I guess in terms of, you know, teaching empathy, I've always looked to kind of body work and, and Tai Chi as, as a way of trying to uh, bring that out. And I, in fact, I developed a kind of empathy form, if you see what oh. I mean, uh -huh. which actually I got from, I, I got from an Aikido friend. Uh, from a, a movement, a form in Aikido, uh, which which um, symbolizes empathy in a bodily way, the oh. movements in order to train the, the particular aspects of empathy. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, so well, how does that work? What is that form? It's going to be difficult to demonstrate. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. But, but I'll, I can give you a verbal description. So, okay. So... Um, so in, in Aikido, there's this thing where in, when somebody's coming towards you, uh, when somebody's attacking you, you, you don't just kind of, you know, fight back. You, know, you don't just sort of charge into them and sort of fight back. You go with their energy. So in the same way, uh, in empathy, what we do is somebody's coming towards me, somebody I, I perceive as a, you know, as, a, as a threat, somebody's coming towards me, I step aside take a step aside, I self-empathize for a moment, 
So that's the moment of self-empathy. And then I go with them. I turn and go with them and flow, flow with them in the direction that they're going. Not because I think that that's the only way ever to go, like your policeman or your kind of, you know, your people on the, the right or on the left. I go with them because I'm curious about where they're going and I want to understand where they're going and I want the mm. connection. So I go with, in their direction and walk with them, walk side by side with them. So instead of kind of, you know, collapsing or fighting back when, 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 I, when I perceive a threat, you know, a threat to use that language, I turn, self-empathize and go with that person and see where they're going and, and really try to understand and create a connection on the basis of where they want to go. Mm -hmm. Remembering that might not be the direction I want to go in, but, uh, but just because I want the connection. And then when, I, when, when they're fully heard, when, 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 when I check with them, you know, is, is that what you wanted to say? Is that how you want it to be heard? And then I say, well, you know, are you open to hearing what's going on for me? And then if they say yes, then I, I tell them about the direction I'd like to go in, you know, about what's important to me. And if they say no, then I continue walking with them, empathizing with them until we get to the point where they're ready to listen to me. So mm -hmm. that's the kind of the verbal mm -hmm. equivalent. Yeah, know. and you've got uh, physical, you're bringing it into the physicality, a sort of model that it, to get as close as you can out of the, just the verbal into the felt experience and into the body uh, yeah. As, yeah. as ways to kind of get in, into that, yeah. That's it, and, and walking seems to help as well. It's like if you're walking with somebody, there's a natural kind of buddying and curiosity about them. Like, oh, who is this person next to me? And, uh, oh, uh, so you have people walk with each other? Do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. There's a video on YouTube on, on my channel, which kind of, it's a few years old, but, it, but it's, um, it's a session where I where it went into that, where I demonstrated that. It's called Embodied MVC. Embodied. Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's what I'm very interested in too. Is the felt experience of the, the how do we get how do we show this in in the in you know in the body and contact improv? I had done that years ago, so it's yeah, yeah. very much like that. You're in constant bodily motion, trying to stay with a point of connection. You have to be you know very attuned. And what you're what you're describing at Tai Chi is, I guess, the sort of almost like push hands. Is that it's kind of similar well I, mean, I, 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 I call it following hands because okay. yeah. but, I, but, but i got it i got it from pushing hands uh -huh. yeah that kind of idea yeah. so push hands maybe has a bit of a competitive aspect Absolutely. trying to bring it into the following somebody or just kind of following and so translate yeah. it more of an empathic approach yeah, yeah. but i like that thing about contact improv and maybe we'll play with that in future trainings mm. You know, mm -hmm. as a way of getting people into that bodily listening with the body. That's what it's, you know, that's what it's about. Well, what do you find for training? Like that's something you know, I'm trying to develop more of is the training. Uh, what, what have you found really effective? Maybe you give a bit of an overview of the trainings mm -hmm. that you do. And it... Well, I think different approaches work for different people. I think, I think the bodily listening with the body works for most people um, that I've come across. However, we do some role play. We do, uh, as, as we talked about before, uh, kind of sit down, role plays. Um, and we do quite a bit of self-empathy. So we kind of get people into their own experience, uh, and get them more connected with themselves on the basis that if you, have, if you have space for yourself, if you have space to connect with yourself, then you have space to connect with the, the, the people around you. So we kind of move between those different modes of, uh, of you know, self-empathy and empathizing with others. Well, the thing, you know, the, the center I have, I call it the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy. So I was curious, what is your thoughts about building a society sort of mm. around empathy? Uh, because right now, I think in the UK and as well as here, there's a real polarization, especially uh, mm. uh, here we have, you know, political polarization, street fights here on the West Coast as well mm. as the East Coast. Mm. So there's this growing, uh, you know, conflict and that we're, it seems that if we could create a culture that had empathy as a primary social value, that that could you know, just make the world a kind of a better place for. Yeah, yeah, and, I'd be I'd be delighted if empathy became a, a a household word, both in the U.S. and the U.K. and and elsewhere. And I think that element of really listening to to the people we regard as our enemies, really listening to them 
um, is is you know in the long term is the way is the way to kind of understand each other. You know, you know, conflict wants to be understood. You know, drawing in something from my sort of work as a mediator and a restorative practice. You know, conflict wants to be understood in its particularity, in its detail. You know. People want to be heard. They want to be understood. And that's kind of the key to, you know, uh, addressing these, to, to allowing these conflicts to flower into mutual understanding. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, allowing myself to be affected by the people I'm listening to. Yeah. So any thoughts on how to make that happen at a wider scale? Like there's, there's sort of this workshops, you know, people doing all these workshops, yeah. but it doesn't seem to scale up. Mm. into the political you know into the larger social it's like it seems like it's actually going the opposite direction yeah. you yeah. know at the political left and the right you know it's almost like a more like dysfunctional couple you know <laughs> and who who's the social mediators that can step mm. into holding that empathic space yeah. to bring the sides mm. together so. Right. so so what i heard is you're seeing more polarization rather than people actually understand under willingness to understand each other it seemed more polarization and how to address that yeah on a on a wider scale well i'm how to address it on a wider scale well i'm doing what i can my social <laughs> change my social change objective was to bring out a book mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> well, i started about i started about 11 well no my, uh, i started further back than that really but um, i i thought well you know just just pull at the edges, you know, pull at the edges, pull at the threads that are loose, you know, you know, and keep pulling, uh, you know, and making connections, making friends, making, you know, making, making contacts with people in different organizations. You know, that's my, that's been my approach. Mm -hmm. So just, uh, you bring out a book, you're teaching, you're looking for, you're doing mediation in different environments. And I guess that's what you call this the different, uh, the, yeah, the edges, the thread. Yeah, that's working. it. And and also having an idea of the kind of systems I'd like to see in place. You know, uh, in the kind of the kind of society and the kind of world I'd like to live in. You know, different systems in uh, different economic systems, different uh, systems for uh, justice. You know, or which have a more restorative uh, approach. Different systems for um, passing on information for support or empathy and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. So you have sort of the vision too. You yeah. Kind of have yeah. the vision, you hold that vision and keep working towards, yeah. towards yeah. that vision. And, Talk, and talking it up. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Talking it up. Giving people a realistic picture of new cheese. Do you know that <laughs> book? You know that book about who moves my cheese? No, I never no? heard of that. I've never yeah. read it. It's about no. managing change. It's a classic kind of book about managing change. And one of the things I got from it was, uh, Really, to, if you want people to get excited about new cheese, you've got to talk about new, the new cheese and about how tasty it is and how, how w wonderfully smelling it is. Mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. Imagine and to visualize that, that new cheese. And then they'll put on their running boots and start going around the maze looking for it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, part, part of my job, as it were, is, is yes, to talk about the new cheese and about what yeah. it smells like and what it, you know, what it tastes like. You know. Yeah. So that culture of empathy is the new cheese. Like, hey, we really have this culture that really smells good, feels good, people enjoy it, there's a lot of yeah. creativity, we're yeah. having fun, it's, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. like this is, this is where, we're where we're working towards going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it tastes like people are listening to each other. It tastes mm -hmm. like people are people are listening to each other, not with any ulterior motive, but because they want to understand each other, and they want to work together to build a, a new society or a different kind of society. Yeah, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. We went for about an hour. Don't want to keep you over, even though I could go for a couple hours on this. It's, uh, I just enjoy talking well, about call it. Call me back. Call me back tomorrow. Okay. Good. We'll keep the conversation going. I'm sure the, there's a lot of different threads. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, we could talk more about the new cheese. Yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, how do we create that? So, well, thanks again. Uh, and there'll be links, you know, to your site and everything in the book, you know, that. I'll meet you there, a practical guide to empathy, mindfulness, and communication. So highly recommend it. And um, so thanks, uh, Shanti Gava, for this uh, delightful uh, chat. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I, yeah, likewise. I had a lot of fun. I re really enjoyed it. And I hope to see you when I'm over on the West Coast in a few weeks' time. Oh, yeah. Great. Look forward to that. Fantastic.